Hi, everybody. I'm Mark S. King. I write as My Fabulous Disease, and I'm excited because right now I have on the other side of that screen um, Jeff Berry, who is the newly, I want to say crowned, that's a, a little um, magisterial, isn't it? Maybe I'll just say named the most recent, uh, or, well, the new, the only, the one and only, literally, uh, executive director of the Reunion Project. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me. Well, yeah, sure, of course. On 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 my uh, little Zoom call, you're very welcome. Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot to say. First of all, so the news is that the Reunion Project, which has been literally this project for long-term survivors uh, for the last five years or so, now has an actual full-time executive director, and you're it. Yeah, no pressure there, right? Uh, thank you. <laughs> I'm really excited, and actually, it's seven years ago that we uh, uh, founded the Reunion Project. I co-founded it along with uh, longtime activists and long-term survivor Matt Sharp. Um, you know, we this is around the time when they were doing a lot of town halls in San Francisco and other places around, and people were just starting to talk about long-term survivorship and um, HIV and aging is starting to come to the forefront and. You know, we realized that a lot of the organizations that we had actually helped to create had in some ways left us behind. And so we created this uh, organization to address some of the needs, the unique needs of uh, HIV long-term survivors. You know, when you say organizations had kind of left us behind, <clears throat> it reminds me of what I've, I, I say a lot to groups of other survivors, and that is the cavalry ain't coming. Right. Uh, you know, it is up to us and it always has been up to us, hasn't it? I mean, as you look at the generations of us uh, from the beginning, it's always been in the hands of people living with HIV to advocate for ourselves, hasn't it? And this is just the latest example of that. Now that we're aging, now that we're long term survivors, what are our issues? Who is going to help us? And it's going to be us, isn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, that's exactly it. I, um, you know, back in the early days, we didn't, there were no services for, for people who were, um, you know, had HIV or AIDS. I mean, the, the one thing that sticks in my mind is a lot of the organizations that were around back in those early days were for people who were dying. Mm -hmm. And they weren't necessarily designed or created for people who were living uh, with HIV. They were really AIDS hospices, you know, people who are dealing with um, AIDS and, and rightfully so, because we didn't have any treatments at that time. And, and so we were kind of had to create our own uh, network and of support and information and education around, you know, upcoming treatments um, or just, you know, coming together to support each other during a very, very dark time. I mean, we couldn't have imagined, right? I mean, a part of this is, uh, it's a wonderful problem to have in a way. And that is that here we are, I, I think you've been living with HIV for 33, 35 years. Is that right? That's right. Something like that. Could be longer. You know, yeah, I don't, exactly. In you know, other words, as soon as I tested in 85, it was positive. So what do I know? You know, I know it was right. at least 37 years ago. Right. Um, and, and so here we are still walking and talking. And yet we have issues. Uh, we have psychosocial issues. Or do we have issues? PSD. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, don't get me started. Uh, and and uh, medical issues, and it's like, we've always been the guinea pigs, you know? At the very beginning, it was like, well, let's give them AZT and see how that works, you know? Let's find out, you know? We were the guinea pigs. And now we're kind of the guinea pigs in terms of, well, okay, they've lived for 37 years with this thing. Now what will happen, right? Right, and um, you know, I. I think that, uh, you know, being people who uh, have been through this before gives us, you know, some kind of an advantage, I guess, in the, in the sense that, um, well, it's also kind of like, well, here we go again, kind of thing, but, but it also, you know, we, we've learned how to deal with an epidemic and a pandemic and several pandemics, you know, and, uh, and uh, so, you know, I think it's an opportunity I think there's a lot of different and varied stories of survival, right? So there's, my story is unique from your story, which is different than um, other people in the community and who've experienced survival 
And I think, you know, making sure that we include a diverse and wide range of voices is going to be critical to our work going forward. You know, I don't want to put the cart before the horse because already we're getting into this great conversation and I want people to know who and what the reunion project is. So explain for anyone who might not know who is the reunion project. Sure. So the reunion project is the National Alliance of Long Term Survivors of HIV. Um, and what some of the programming that we do is around um, gatherings that we go into various community communities around the country and we work and develop a host committee we work with people in that region to develop and tailor a program a two-day program uh, that's tailored to their community so we don't you know our intention was never to go into these various communities um, and say here's our program and okay two later. days later bye we'll see you later right. you know we really wanted to kind of spark a um something that would be ongoing and so we've done that in in several um cities uh where you know they've still having they're still having events you know five six seven years later annual events and uh you know have created kind of this network of programming and support and so we work in collaboration with the national working positive coalition which um is a full day that's uh, around employment uh, for considerations for people who are over 50, who are aging with HIV, who are considering going back to work. There's mm -hmm. also a lot of information around benefits uh, that are available and or uh, agencies that, uh, that have provide services for people living and aging with HIV who are considering going back to work or you know don't, don't even know about certain benefits that might be available in their city or state. Um, or even on the federal level. And so, so now our, uh, what used to be a one day town hall kind of event is now two days. Um, every event that we do now is one day is with National Working Positive Co Coalition where they develop that program. And then the second day is, is a town hall uh, where we kind of come together and it's what I like to call a perfect blend of science and spirit. So we, share our stories, our collective stories of trauma and loss, and, you know, try to find a way forward. But that's also interspersed with, um, you know, educational uh, presentations, informational presentations, maybe around HIV and aging, maybe about around sex when you're over 50. Um, and uh, some various topics of breakout sessions where and then we come together again, and you know, have a facilitated conversation at the end. So it's really an opportunity for people to provide input um, mm -hmm. and to be heard. And uh, you know, it's it's really been kind of overwhelming. You know, people in those communities to actually you know speak and um, you know be heard for the you know the first time. Some of these people that we've encountered along the way, um, members of our network. You know, this is the first time that they've ever talked about survival, or that they've even gone back to those early days um, and it's very um, revelatory it's a very experiential it's hard to kind of name you almost have to kind of experience it but through a facility com facilitated conversation you know and people sharing all these different stories you know you start to see this common thread of humanity that's woven through each story that binds us all together and it's really um, uplifting I think it's empowering. I think the diversity and the experiences and the lived experience of long-term survivors of HIV is, um, it shows how to be resilient, how people are, have been, re, be, you know, learned resilience, how they've developed resilience and, and how they've overcome a lot of barriers. Well, you know, I'm a fan uh, and always have been. It's always been, uh, th this whole concept has always been uh something that really got me you know i mean and and i feel as if you you get it in terms of the reunion project gets it in terms of you know what we're feeling and uh what we've been through and the fact that we're all a little haunted uh we are also um very uh filled with a lot of pride for what it is we were able to accomplish then and continue to do now uh and uh, we're still a little worried about what it all means medically to us, you know, as we continue uh, getting older and older. I think I got to speak at uh, the Reunion Project event in um, 
uh, Palm Springs about five years ago. Uh, and that was really great. That was a lot of fun. And <clears throat> I felt like I was um, among friends and I was among people that totally understood. There wasn't, I didn't have to do a lot of explanation. I just told my story, you know, and lots of heads nodding, you know, uh, uh, it felt really, really good. Um, and um, I, anyway, I'm, I'm glad that you're there. I'm glad that you're doing this. I'm a little amazed. How old are you? Um, let's see, I'm going to be 64 in a month. Oh, you had to think so about that just, for a second. It's you just know? 63. Well, <laughs> wow, like 63. Okay, so what the hell are you doing taking on a new chapter, <laughs> a new career chapter at this wizened age of 63 years know. old? What are you, I, I guess I this is no a idea. testament to the exact thing <laughs> we're talking about here, which is the, the viability of those of us over a certain age, right? Yeah, right. So um, I don't know that I have an answer for that other than, um, you know, I I had a great run at uh, T-PAN and Positively Wear magazine. So um, yeah, for anybody who doesn't know, you have been the editor of Positively Aware magazine, the uh, largest nonprofit HIV uh, new magazine newsletter, whatever you want to call it, uh, that exists in this country. And you've been doing it for 17 years. I have only ever known you as the editor of Positively Aware. So right. what's it like to walk out that door? Yeah. yeah, so it was hard, but it was, you know, it was time. I think, you know, 30 years is a long time to be in any job, let alone, I think, a, a nonprofit, like, you know, especially in a great nonprofit like TPAN. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, I had this amazing opportunity and there was um, just, an, you know, it's, it's an offer I couldn't refuse, right? Uh, so, um, yeah, so I, you know, I think I came to TPAN 30 years ago as a client. I was looking for services. I was deathly afraid, literally deathly afraid, because I thought I was going to die. I just learned I, I was diagnosed in 1989, and and I didn't, um, you know, have much hope. None of us really did. Um, we'd come to those meetings, you know, and they were packed uh, wall to wall and just uh, getting some information, you know. Um, hearing about uh, different treatments that experimental treatments and just, you know, supporting each other. And then the next week you'd come and, uh, you know, some people would, wouldn't be there and just because they died. And mm -hmm. so that's the kind of thing it was. That's the kind of time we were in. Um, and so TPAN really um, offered, you know, me hope and gave me hope. And um, I came on as, you know, started as a volunteer and then I came on as a, you know, uh, full-time in um, and always working on the magazine. So TPAN is a local organization in Chicago, but we published, like you said, this national magazine, Positively Aware. And so um, I kind of uh, just worked my way up, I guess you could say, um, to editor. I came on in 2004 as interim when Charles Clifton, my predecessor, died suddenly on the job. And, um, you know, I was really, um, it was a hard time for us, but uh, I kind of stepped into it because, you know, somebody had to do it, right? So, and, but I was encouraged by um, uh, my uh, peers in the organization. Matt was working at uh, TPAN at that time and some others. And um, I don't have a journalism degree. I don't have a journalism background, but I've, I've always been uh, creative. I like to write. Uh, I was a DJ in a former life. And so, Creativity is really key, I think, to um, everything that I've been able to do. I've been very, very fortunate to have you know jobs where um, I can be creative, and so I think this is just kind of an extension of that in some ways. Um, I, uh, you know, you know the, I the big really... takeaway for me, Jeff, of everything you've just said is I keep thinking of you laying down sick beats as a DJ. <laughs> somewhere I, I don't know I, I i don't want to get that image out of my head for a couple of minutes i just i just love that you know yeah i still dabble i have a you know a, you a do controller. yeah oh yeah sure and um, we do our hiv long-term survivor dance party every year um in june for the reunion project so uh, around long-term survivors awareness day and, and so do you create the mix fun. for that i do wow that is so cool i never knew that about you 
Yeah, and but I, you know, it's mostly oldies that I I, I do. Um, uh, everything's digital now. Thank God. Yeah, but I, Thank God. They're I have oldies. a bunch of vinyl and uh, gathering dust in my basement. But uh, um, you know, those I, are very it's, it's, those are very um, you know uh, uh, they're worth a lot of money now. Of course. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, sure. Um, you know, I have I, a Cheryl Lee Ralph record down there somewhere too. Wow. Uh, so, yeah. You know, I um, you, so when you talked about taking over as the editor, and it's like you you didn't have much experience in that specifically, but you figured it out and you just did it. To me, that's a long term HIV survivor. That's what we did. That's what we've always done. Is we didn't know exactly what we were doing, but we just jumped in and figured it out. You talk about those meetings, you know, I remember the town halls, my God, in the 80s and early 90s, where we were all we were all just stuffed in there. Hungry for information and networking like crazy amongst us. Oh, there's this new support group. So you should really try it out. Or have you heard about D4T or shark cartilage or whatever the latest thing was, you know, just all of the information old school writing it down on a piece of paper, you know, your little notebook of, of, of where to go or, or, you know, what doctor is, is got a new, you know, clinical trial going on. I mean, it was really something back then. It was terrifying and it was everything that was the best of us in terms of community. And I feel as if the reunion project is an extension of that um, because a lot of us remember what that was like and um and we're still figuring it out we have new tools maybe everything's a little more higher tech but it's the same spirit thank you and and um i agree and i i also just want to you know emphasize the network part of what we do um because there is a power in networks of people living with hiv and so we remember the reunion project is one of the um standing member of the uh, U.S. People Living with HIV Caucus, mm -hmm. um, you know, so along with, uh, you know, Zero Project, another network of individuals living with HIV, PWN, Positive Women's Network USA, mm -hmm. um, and others. And um, so, uh, you know, it's so imperative that we uh, lift up and uh, use the power of our collective voices as networks of people living with HIV to advance um, the issues that most concern us. And so, um, and there's, you know, there's, there's nearly 400,000 of us now in the United States, right? 400,000 people living with HIV who are over what, 50? Yes, correct. And, um, you know, so that's a large segment of our HIV long-term survivors, but, you know, we take a really expansive and inclusive view of long-term survival at the Reunion Project, um, which includes, you know, historically those, you know, before 1996, before there were effective treatments, uh, is a, that's a person is would be considered a long-term survivor, but also people who lived with HIV 10 years, you know, that's a long-term survivor. We include um, uh, verticals, uh, people who acquired HIV around birth. Mm -hmm. um, some of these people have, you know, experienced the same amount of loss and trauma, uh, losing their family, their friends, um, mm -hmm. and to, to HIV and AIDS, and also have been living with HIV for 10, 20, 30 years. So they are long-term survivors too. And so you know, we it's a weird, sure we you know, it. our definition of it <clears throat> has always been um, a, a little vague or, you know, and... and uh, I just, the way I come down on it is you're a long-term survivor when you say you are. Exactly. You say you're a long-term survivor, good. I'm not gonna argue with you. You know, it used to be that um, I think for a long time, the we defined it as anyone who was diagnosed prior to um, 1996, you know, the prophylactic, you know, when, when we got multi-drug, you know, the, the multi-drug therapies that, that started to do the job. Uh, and that made sense for a while. Uh, until we realized, well, if we just, you know, sooner or later, those people are all going to die, even of natural causes, you know, there, you, you, and how do you not include anyone who has now lived for 30 years uh, with HIV, even if they came of age, you know, or nearly 30 years, uh, came, uh, even though they were diagnosed after multi-drug therapies, you know, so 
um, it's it's a strange way to try to figure out who we are, and we might as well just say you are when you say you are, right? Yeah, and I, I think, you know, we also include allies uh, in, in our definition of long-term survivors. And I think, you know, um, so like, um, I remember specifically when I we started this in our first event in Chicago and um, a person uh, approached me and she said, can I, she sent, I think she sent me an email. She's like, um, I'm not living with HIV, um, you know, but she was a nurse way back in the day. She experienced a lot of loss um, and uh, you know, trauma and, sure. you know, went through all those dark days of the epidemic, holding our hands and by our bedside when we died, you know, and, um, and I said, absolutely. You're a long term survivor too. And she, you know, I, I get goosebumps just thinking about it because that meant so much to her. She told me later, she's like, you know, that like really changed her, her whole perspective. And mm -hmm. she really appreciated that, you know, I just like, you know, you're a long term survivor too. I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously the issues aren't going to be the same, um, but none of us are the same. And so we need we to all sure exa that, exactly those experiences yeah. are going to be varied as it is. Uh, and I've always considered advocacy about addition rather than subtraction, you know, right. and so as, uh, to whatever extent we can add people. And in terms of who is or his, is not, you know, I, I always use the example of my brother. I have an older brother who is gay and <clears throat> he and his partner, <clears throat> Emil, were like my role models, you know, growing up and coming into my 20s. And uh, Emil passed away from AIDS. And it was, um, it was gruesome and very difficult um, uh, for my brother. And I, I always say, don't let anyone say that my brother doesn't know what it's like to live with AIDS. Uh, and my brother who was negative uh, and who buried Emil um, because he was there. He knows what it's like. Uh, and so uh, I include him in this conversation, you know, um, what, let me, do, before we go, one more thing, what would, what advice would you give a long-term survivor who might be watching this and isn't involved at all or, or has issues and, and, and concerns of their own? What's good advice for a long-term survivor right now? Um, well, I think that whether you're actively involved in an organization or uh, like the reunion project or you know your local hiv aid service organization you volunteer or if you're just picking up the phone to call on a friend to see if they're okay i think the key, the main thing i was is reach out um and you know just like uh, we were cared for it is now us who are the caregivers um, and, and we're the ones that um, you know uh, are going to be you know helping to develop the new leaders who are going to be coming into the long-term survivor movement because you know we're not going to be here forever um, but I, I think it's really important you know to uh, to get the most back for yourself you need to uh, open up a little bit and, and reach out to others. And so I think remaining isolated is like not the answer. The mm -hmm. trick is for us to, you know, how do we identify those who are most isolated um, to bring them, you know, into the fold as it were. Right. You know, as with so many, I mean, the, the, the solution to so much of life is to have the, uh, take the courage to reach out a hand and ask for help to say, I need, I need uh, something, you know, I need help. Because uh, there's a whole really community hard, waiting, know. waiting for you. There's a whole community yeah. waiting for you. Help so. awaits. How do people find out more about the Reunion Project? Where can they go? So, yeah, so um, reunionproject.net is our website. So check us out there. We also have a, a Facebook page and a closed group for long-term survivors who want to have uh, to continue the conversations and is that uh, also Twitter. the reunion project on facebook look up the reunion project yes. page yeah okay, it is great. the reunion project and then uh instagram twitter we're, we're all there so check us out Good. and um yeah so um and if you go to our uh website um i'm having a little uh 
email issue right now. I'm trying to resolve with our server. Maybe I'll call you after this. <laughs> oh, don't ask me. I, I don't know. I don't. I have people. I have people for that. Right. I, I got no idea. Um, but uh, yeah, so you can also email us for more information. Uh, that information okay. is on our website. Well, Jeff, I am so happy for you. I'm excited for you and for this new chapter. I'm very happy for Reunion Project uh, for having um, created the resources. This doesn't happen without resources. So somebody out there, money people, and I know pharma and other people have kind of come together. Um, that means that they, they take you seriously and they take you seriously enough to provide funding uh, to make this happen, to put staff into place like you. And so good for them, good for the reunion project. I'm, I'm so really, I'm, I'm happy for you. And as we go into our silver hood, I'm not, I'm not giving up my red beard dye. Not, not yet. <laughs> you know, you look good as a silver daddy. And thank God that daddies uh -huh. have been branded as hot, right? Isn't that great? <laughs> um, granddaddies, I'm not so sure. So, you know, we got, the clock is ticking. Well, thank you, Mark. And, uh, you know, thank you so much for this opportunity. And thank you for all that you do. Um, you are uh, the voice in the community and you get other people's voices out there. So we appreciate everything you do. So thanks. You're welcome. It's my privilege, right? That's a privilege to do it. And I'm so, and I'm, and I'm, uh, I'm blessed to be able to. So you are welcome and congratulations on your job. And so let's say goodbye to our, our, our zoom people. Bye. Thanks everybody.